Hi everyone, my name is Irma. I am in Chicago, Illinois, in my own home, and it is March 22nd, 2020. We are in the midst of um, self-distancing uh, protocols and quarantine um, and non avoiding non-essential um, exiting of our homes as requested by like our government officials. Um, and we're in the midst of it. It's been one week and um, counting. We're expecting that next week be like another um, official mandate. And um, so many other things are in place too, like public schools are closed, um, all different kinds of institutions, libraries, public parks. Um, Dine-in restaurants are all closed. And for that reason, um, people are needing to stay home um, regardless because there really isn't anything to go out for in regards to like entertainment. Um, one of the important reasons, what I would consider as an essential reason to go out is um, not only for your uh, essential uh, food, needs, your food and care needs, uh, but also the opportunity for you to breathe in fresh air and to walk in a park if you have the opportunity to do that while still keeping safe distance uh, from others around you. I am recording this video from my own home because I'm preparing to do, um, well, because I'm here <laughs> as, uh, as, as a good girl, good, good citizen, and because I am preparing to record some uh, videos, meditation videos and some yoga videos uh, for a particular client next week, but it's also inspired me to record um, additional material that I will probably be posting up to my YouTube site at Juntas on This Earth, and you'll be finding on my Facebook page at Juntas Gatherings, and um, you'll see occasional invitations on my Instagram at Chocolatude. Those are my three social media platforms. Oh, I'll mention also LinkedIn. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, those are the ones that have kind of limited my access and uh, activity to, even though there's four, um, it's a lot less than what I think is available out there. And it still feels like a lot for me. So um, I am maintaining that because I think at, this, at these times, it's like social media is a place where so many people are turning to for information, for connection, um, for any kinds of um, stimuli that can help them with getting through this transitional period that we're in. So you're seeing me. <laughs> pretty raw. I'm in my pajamas. It's about, I don't know. I, I lost track of time. I probably recorded or announced the wrong date, but I do believe it's Sunday afternoon. Um, and, um, and I have kind of been active, just letting my creativity kind of flow with the kinds of things and information and offerings that are useful, not only for the people who I'd like to serve, but also for my own fulfillment in providing wisdom and teachings and guidance that I am familiar with and that I feel I don't want to call it a duty, but I feel a calling to be able to make available at this time. And I know that there's so much information that's going around out there. We're getting flooded with all kinds of do's and don'ts and memes and tips and tricks and videos and movies. And, you know, there's sarcasm and, um, uh, basically you kind of like name it and you'll find all you know false news fake news real news um, 
real news being, um, gosh, what's the word? I'm at a loss for words today too. But real news being accused of being fake news. And all of that can also just get so overwhelming. What I will intend to provide is content that is not overlapping or repetitive or um, causing more confusion. Rather, my intention would be to create content that is truly coming from an authentic place of knowing of my own wisdom, of my own experience, of my own abilities, and provide content that kind of like cuts through all of the stimulus and moves straight into the energetic purpose or the energetic powers that we all have the ability to tap into when we tune down all of the noise that is going on around us. And so I hope that my messages don't get lost with all of the stimulus that is spinning around. Um, it might turn out to be and feel like this information is like finding a needle in a haystack, um, and it might be because I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not the best at, at having like the majority of audiences. And I know that there's algorithms that are out there on social media that decide what is worthy of being shared and what is not. And oftentimes it is this kind of content and this kind of information that goes to directly into a truth that stimulates and validates your own personal powers to be in your power, to be in your strength, to be in your health, um, to stimulate all of the non, the physical and the non-physical abilities that are within you and that are your birthright as a human being on this earth. That is what I want to touch on. That is what I want to guide you towards. That is what I will be sharing and making available. And some of it I'll be able to do um, and just provide and make available free of charge. And then some of it, I also am placing a value to it. And currently that, that still relates to monetary value um, because I also have my own bills to pay and I have my own financial needs. And I recognize how valuable the work that I do actually is. And so it's really important for me um, to also feel as if I am recognized in that way and that the exchange in energy is, is one that is also self-healing for me as well. Um, because if I deplete of my own energy and if I deplete of my own resources by just um, not self-caring for my own needs, then you've lost another resource. And it is a downward spiral when the self-care of anyone who is in the healing field is not primary and um, and priority. And so that has been the priority for me and my own self for many, many years. And I'm in the state where I could say, I really got this right now. I feel like I have been prepared throughout my life to be able to sit in this moment, grounded, calm, confident, and fully aware and inspired of how this state of being is one that everyone can tap into and how we can actually thrive in moments and in situations that are new to us rather than allow the unknown to be something that overwhelms us. Um, 
if you have followed any of my work, you know that I love the hashtags of embrace the shadow, um, uh, sh hashtag shadow work, hashtag between the worlds. Um, all of these are ways that I've sort of captured the learning moments within my lifetime, whether they have been through other teachers, whether it's been actual life experiences, whether it's been through emotional breakdowns, through facing my own um, dark night. What's that term, the, the dark night of the soul? And coming out through the other side. And so just specifically last summer, I had an experience that I know was exactly what was preparing me for this moment in time. And it was the experience where I felt, I knew that I died. I had a dream. My dreams are also immensely prophetic and telling. And in this particular dream, I died. I was consumed by a tidal wave. And um, initially after I wanted to resist it and my body tensed up, I realized that there was no reason to do that. And as I surrendered and just kind of relaxed my body and I felt all of the sensations through the dream, the wave took me over and I floated underwater and underwater I saw my body and I saw myself just let go of even trying to breathe of trying to control anything in the situation. And when I did that, suddenly a portal appeared to me. There was a doorway that presented itself and I passed through that doorway. And when I did that, I connected with some ancestors who invited me to sit and chat with them. And when that happened, that's when I woke up. So I know I received the information. It's not a conscious memory, however, but it is within my DNA. It's within my deep understanding of who it is that I am. Subsequent to that, I then in my real awaking life, in my 3D life, I spent solo time In an outcry to my creator, I took a solo road trip through the four corners in the southwest of America and traveled through ancient civilizations, camped out in the desert, um, really sat with nature and the life elements, built fires. Um, breathed in the forest, the jungle, um, the desert air, and also all of the wisdom from the civilizations that had been in those spaces before. And that whole experience connected me back to my ability and my immense, immense survival skills. And those are the survival skills that reactivated in me, that reminded me of what was important, was that I had, during those moments, the food that I needed, the shelter that I needed, and um, basically the energetic safety around me and the emotional well-being that kept my body safe and healthy. And it also activated my psyche to remember the basics of what is important to live and experience and enjoy this world. And so when I came home after that trip, I was presented with these moments of quiet where all of my client engagements had ceased 
And still at first I had like this knee jerk reflex reaction where I needed to be doing something. And I had these moments of go going stir crazy at home and, and not, you know, not feeling as if, um, I was contributing or that I was like wasting time. And instead what happened was as I allowed to, myself to just be and not worry about doing so much, I further improved my own overall well-being by getting the kind of rest that I needed, by reprogramming my entire system and releasing the old rules and the old paradigms of what it means to live. And what that means is that I learned to appreciate myself and realize my own self-worth and my own self-value, even in times when the only thing that I did an entire day was get up and feed myself. And in recognizing how much and how overpowering detrimental thoughts and self-limiting thoughts and beliefs would come up, I feel as if I gave myself the chance to, <laughs> to let all of those arise and then to catch them and transform them. And so it was a practice. It was a practice that was so dear to me. It was so turbulent. And it was so dear, and it was also so empowering. And so now um, I'm just coming off of this amazingly beautiful uh, transformational facilitation training retreat that I had for three weeks in Bali, which is an amazingly beautiful energy vortex on its own with tons of like healing energy. And I was surrounded by women in the field of healing themselves and healing others and allowed myself to uh, be vulnerable, allowed myself to show up, allowed myself to be held and allowed myself to um, remind myself of my ability to hold others as well. And my training happened last year and also <laughs> For the numerous years beforehand, every, every big event in my life has contributed to getting me to this point. So I've been through the training. I'm, I'm kind of like telling you, I've been, I'm one who's been on the other side and I'm still standing. And if that resonates for you in any kind of way, as potentially someone who might be able to offer you guidance on how to remember all of your own abilities and also to um, provide you guidance on if you don't remember how you can retrain and reprogram and rebuild all of this beautiful power within you, then that's what my intention is. And it's, I didn't know I was going to reveal this whole entire story, but that's my story. And that's the place from which I am coming to make offerings available. And they are offerings. So one thing in Bali that is absolutely beautiful is that every action involves an offering. Um, an offering to the spirit that is greater than us. An offering of appreciation and of beauty and of color and I'll, I'll probably post a picture alongside with this video so that you see what i mean and so on a um i don't know what the rhythm is or if the rhythm changes based on the cycles or seasons um in the year or the calendar but i noticed at least weekly that um, people prepare an actual offering that's made of a beautiful straight a straw basket that's then filled with flower petals, 
and fruits and um, some burning incense that is left out not only for the gods, but also for any new visitors. And the ritual of making a, a regular offering is so lovely. Like imagine that, that every so often, if it's not daily, if it's weekly or on, on special occasions, whatever it may be, that every so often that we all pause and consider not so much what I need, what can I get, um, how much can, how can I have more and more, but that we pause and also consider what can I offer? What is the beauty that I can offer into the world? How am I contributing? What can I do or be? What can I do or how can I be to offer something to others that is of my own unique intention? That is not a repetition or in competition to anyone else, but that is truly about. I'm getting some chills here because this is kind of really getting to the point of seeing through all of the mass stimulus that's around us and recognizing the authenticity. Um, the authenticity of creations that are coming from those who are really tapped into their unique beauty and their unique ability and that that is the intention for the offering versus either trying to flood the system or seeing um, opportunities to compete, opportunities to overthrow your neighbor, trying to be better than what someone else already has out there. Um, and rather than all of that, creating from a place that is authentic and, and that comes from beyond the brain and our programmed capitalistic way of making things available, but rather that's, that is an art, that is a creation, that can only come from the experience that is unique to every single person. How beautiful is that? That is so freaking beautiful. And I cannot wait to see the kinds of creativity that will result from folks who are tapping into themselves during this time and are going inward. And so this, this self, isolation slash um, physical distancing requirements we can take them as like oh we're we're trapped in the house now we can't leave um, the parameters of our wall and instead tune into media TV technology and flood ourselves with outside information or we can take the um, the actual mandate to a deeper level, which is to stay in. And while you are staying in your home, I, just, <laughs> I looked up and I'm seeing this beautiful painting that I made of my deceased um, past, <laughs> Chow Chow, my dog. Her name is Ginger. I had 5 million nicknames for her. And she's just like smiling and her eyes are just like glowing at me right now. And I feel her like beautiful spirit from this art that I made um, in honor of her. And I can see like her spirit like shining through this right now. So <laughs> I got a little distracted, but this is the work I do. I see beyond the physical. I can see energy. Um, and I could see a lot of beauty in these moments. And so just kind of getting back to, I started to, to get off track a bit, but I was getting back to um, going inward, like staying in. Staying in at home is one thing. And staying in and going in is magical. Going inward. So maybe we rephrase staying in 
to going in. Because when you go in, when you look deeply into your your makeup as a human being, which includes your emotional body, your energetic body, um, and your physical body, and it includes your past and your present and your future, and it includes your associations with your ancestors and your descendants, and it includes your connection with to divine energy and other dimensions. And when you go in word and you explore the inner world, those are all of the things that you can tap into and that can offer you insights into your highest self, into your highest powers, into your most potent potential and ways in which you can utilize and um, bring forth all of that through your physical body and your physical manifestation and your creations. Um, <laughs> so that, that's been my world. That's been my journey. That has been my struggle. It's been my contemplation. It's been my saving grace. It's also been um, my night of the dark soul. It has been the scariest moments I have ever experienced. It's also been the most thrilling. It has been the most magical and yet the most dense. It has been the most liberating and at the same time, um, I'm recognizing what my confinements are and what my restrictions are and the paradigms that remain around me and whether those are of service or not of service. And so it's not, it is, it is not a shortcut. It is not a magic pill. It is not a one-stop shop. It is a journey. And the journey will be different for every person. And only you can decide whether you want to take the steps to go on this journey. Because I'm not promising in any kinds of ways that this is going to change your world without having some discomfort along the way. Because getting to a true state of your best self almost required with that comes the need for the systems and illusions and false structures around you to collapse. And that's what's happening for all of us right now as a collective. And as everyone starts to do their individual work, it's also going to start to happen in the individual um, circumference of every person. And so they will experience it not only as a, we will experience it not only as a collective, but if you're on this journey, you're, always go you're also going to experience your own individual world redefining itself. Um, so those are, you know, those are some scary thoughts. Uh, and it's up to you. It is up to you. They are scary thoughts because we have lived in a way that we have been told is the way to live. But now is the opportunity to redefine how it is that we want to live. Redefine it for our own selves, maybe as individuals first, and then that starts to build a new environment around us and build new community, build a new collective consciousness, um, perhaps at a higher, more elevated state. Um, but it's the work. It is the work. And this is the work that I am offering as a guide to you. 
I am offering as a guide to work one-on-one -on -one in connecting with your higher self and your higher spirit to access information at that level that can be useful and healing for you on the physical level and in the physical realm. I am offering to groups opportunities for us to come together in women's circle, in um, virtual classes online. Uh, I have I had started cacao ceremonies and I'm kind of considering ways that I might be able to still hold those ceremonies and um, find ways to deliver the cacao to groups so that we can through group experiences also move energy within our own selves by being held in in sacred space and i am also offering for businesses way new ways in which for you to bring your offerings forward in a redefined manner that is more connected to your authenticity and that is more connected to the collective higher good. And if as a business you are currently struggling with the, the you know the 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 halt basically in society as we know it and you're unsure of what this is going to mean for you going forward this is the absolute opportune time for you to ask yourself the questions of what is your contribution how is it that you are contributing and what changes can you make that are going to um, provide goods and services that are coming from unique authenticity of your abilities and your offerings and that are in service to the greater good. Um, I have, aside from all of this esoteric um, abilities that I have just kind of talked about, I have over 20 years <laughs> working in corporate human resources. And this is why I say that all of my life experience has kind of like come into this culmination of preparing me in this moment now <laughs> to be able to see things from a bigger perspective and to provide guidance and counsel um, from, from all of the experience that, that, that I've gathered and the skills and the abilities and the trainings and the teachers. Um, so I think I'll stop there. Oh my gosh, I seriously was just testing out the space for where my meditation sessions were going to be. I haven't even washed my face <laughs> today and I'm in my pajamas, but <laughs> I felt inspired to just like hit record and like just, ah, this is probably the most that I've talked in the last week. So <laughs> I, I hope that you, um, got maybe a nugget or two of some inspiration, even if it's not related to working with me, but that you got some kind of nugget of inspiration for you to be open to opportunities that you have right now to build your own authenticity and improve your well-being and um, see the world in, in new eyes. See the world in eyes of wonder and curiosity, and um, that's that's the way that I'm seeing the painting of my um, of my Poochie right now. And I feel like I need to come, I need to go grab it and show it to you because she's so beautiful. And I know her spirit is here right now. And this actually was, like I said, it's a painting that I made of her image. So it was like an outlet of creation for me. That also was an homage. So let me grab that real quick. So here she is. <laughs> her name is Ginger. Like I said, I had like thousands of nicknames for her. One of them was um, Red Girl. And uh, 
Red Girl and Shirley and um, occasionally she was Cinnamon and uh, you can see how beautiful, maybe you can't see as much as, as the way that I see her, but I could see her eyes just in this moment like completely sparkling with joy. <laughs> and I know her spirit is here. I could feel her spirit. I could see her through my painting. Um, and I, I, I can't wait until, I mean, we're having an exchange right now, but I, I can't wait until we have an opportunity to be in similar form so that we could uh, connect again. Um, and so like this craving for touch and this craving for togetherness is also starting to, um, I think, to bubble up within all of us as, as you know, we, we are um, not having that right now or we've had to restrict it. Um, so with that, I'm going to um, just close this out and invite you to, if, to visit me if you have any kinds of um, curiosity or more curiosity about how I've organized my offerings, you can visit my website. I do need to wash my hair. <laughs> you can visit my website at www.juntas. I'm going to pause there for a second. Juntas. That's the way my business is pronounced. Juntas. It is spelled X U N T A S and it is pronounced. Juntas, which is the Spanish word for she gathers. I cannot find or think of any other time when ways for us to come together, especially as women, is superly crucial. And my business has been formed for 10 years now. It was originally going to be a cafe lounge, and look at how. Um, the business itself has evolved and transformed over time. It didn't turn into a cafe lounge, but I did end up opening a yoga studio under the name. And then I evolved it into a virtual um, community that was not tied to brick and mortar. And, um, and so at my website, Juntas Chicago, X-U-N-T-A-S, Chicago.com. You can find so much more information and ways to connect with me directly. Um, my YouTube channel where you might be seeing more upcoming videos and such is um, Juntas on this earth. And um, gosh, what else can I tell you? I mentioned my other social media uh, handles and stuff before. Um, my email is posted, so I'm just, I'm just kind of like wanting to say I'm here and don't hesitate to reach out to me. I've also made a lot of free consultations available. So if, um, if, if you're, if you are holding back from reaching out because of financial concerns right now, there's many ways in which, um, we can connect and um, without a financial exchange. And um, I've offered many just av available on their own. And then I'm also open to different kinds of ways for us to barter or trade. So what are your special skills and your unique powers? And how can we trade between us? Um, I am offering a healing session to one of my really great friends. Uh, she was actually one of the first teachers who taught yoga at the studio downstairs and she had previously traded some amazing photography from one of my um, women's circle cacao ceremonies and um, delivered like these beautiful photographs and so in exchange I am um, going to have a healing session with her this week um, so if you've got thoughts on how to barter what to barter um, I'm open to that too, because this is a whole new way of being. So let's explore. Let's, let's have some fun and see what we can create and come up with together. Um, as we transition and our economy like is in this transformation state, let's, let's see what kind of like new creative ways of being um, become the new norm, because we're all part of creating that. So, okay.
all right, I think I do need to go shower. <laughs> like to figure out what I have to eat. And I just want to say thanks for listening if you got to this point. So, um, ciao, baby. I love you so much. <laughs> because I love you so much. More on that soon. Bye.